Hello. Having problems connecting. Um, if there's anybody watching, uh, just let me know if you can hear me or see me. Um, I'm hoping this is working. Looks like there's one viewer. So there's somebody, a couple viewers. Um, so is does the video look clear, look good? Just let me know in the comments um, if, if not. Um, but otherwise, um, my name is Joseph Weens. I'm the winemaker for uh, Weens Family Cellars Winery in Temecula. Um, we are here to talk about um, the uh, 2018 Reserve Petite Syrah. Um, and I was hoping to try to get Brian, our assistant winemaker, on here, but I, for the life of me, don't know how to work Facebook or this whole live thing. And let me see what this button does. Guest requests. Um, oh, I think I can add somebody, so bear with me for just a second. Oh, he's not viewing yet. Well, if, uh, if Brian Marquez, uh, does decide to join us he can he can jump in on this video as well so um, anyway we're here to talk about the 2018 reserve petite Syrah um, but because it's a uh, really warm uh, Temecula Southern California day I thought we would maybe start with a white wine and uh, taste our 2019 uh, Reserve Fumé Blanc. And so this is uh, a release that we start um, uh, started pouring in the cellar room in the Winemaker Select uh, seated tasting room. And uh, this is kind of the starter wine. So the first basically reserve wine to kind of get your palate uh, woken up a little bit and get you, uh, get you ready for our big reds. So um, really nice, light, um, crisp, uh, white wine, um, kind of uh, interesting fact about Fumé Blanc. Fumé Blanc is is essentially the same exact thing as Sauvignon Blanc. So, really, all it is is just a uh, um, a term that I think um, I think Mondavi Robert Mondavi came up with the term. Um, so sorry, there's there's a lot of comments here, and I'm getting distracted. Um, so anyway, uh, Fumé Blanc is a, is a term that, that um, I think Mondavi came up with, kind of a marketing term to uh, differentiate uh, uh, oak-aged Sauvignon Blanc as opposed to just uh, stainless steel or, or no oak Sauvignon Blanc, which the vast majority of Sauvignon Blanc is not aged um, in oak. Uh, but in this instance it is, and that's why we call it Fumé Blanc, and that, that helps us differentiate it from our Sauvignon Blanc uh, in our tasting room, which is uh, an unoaked um, wine. So basically what we do with this Fumé Blanc, we get this fruit from our sage vineyard. A lot of you are familiar with uh, sage. Um, Jeff, my uncle Jeff's vineyard, we get amazing Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, some Petite Syrah, Chardonnay, Viognier, Sangiovese, Barbera, um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but a really nice vineyard, a really beautiful fruit that we get from that vineyard. And um, so we save the Sauvignon Blanc that we harvest from that vineyard for our uh, reserve Fumé Blanc. So uh, it's not a huge lot. I think it is six or seven barrels total. Um, and basically what we'll do with this wine is we um, receive the fruit, we press it in the press, and then it goes directly into the barrels. So we barrel ferment this lot. And that's kind of a kind of an added uh, step, a little more work as a winemaker to to ferment in a barrel as opposed to a tank. Obviously, you know, pumping all the juice into a big tank and fermenting it in a tank is, is a little easier. You've got, uh, you know, jacketed glycol on the tank and, and it makes it really easy to, to control fermentation temperatures. Um, but when you're fermenting in barrels, uh, you have to have them all spread out. You have to have them in, to have them in a nice, um, cool area so that the, the barrels don't get too warm because a byproduct of fermentation is heat. And you do need to mitigate that heat somehow so that the wine um, ferments uh, appropriately and doesn't get weird on you. So um, we keep these barrels nice and cool. We allow them to go dry. Um, 
Then we'll rack them uh, off the gross lees, which is the really heavy lees that settle to the bottom of the tank. Um, and we'll uh, clean the barrel and then pump it back into the barrel, fill it up to the top and age it for, I think this is eight or nine months or so um, in the barrel. Uh, it does still have lees. So lees are, is the yeast uh, sediment and, and some of the sediment from the grape as well. Um, after fermentation, it remains suspended in the wine and it, it will precipitate out or drop to the bottom. But uh, what we do is, is a, a French term called surly or uh, aging on the lees um, and uh, batonnage, which is basically uh, using a wand to stir the, uh, stir the lees to keep them in suspension. And by keeping those, the lees in suspension, you uh, add some body and mouthfeel to the wine. So Sauvignon Blanc is typically very crisp and clean and lean, and we want to add a little more complexity and a little more depth to the wine. So um, we do the surly aging batonnage um, to kind of build a little more palate weight structure and a little bit of creaminess, kind of uh, uh, biscuity uh, character or aromatic as well. So. Let's give this a try if you have it at home. If you, if you don't, sorry, I didn't say anything, but uh, I'll, I'll taste it quickly and then we can move on. So it does have a lot of lemon. It definitely has some of the tropical notes that are typical of, of Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but it's not over the top. More, more than anything, you get this kind of um, lemon curd or this kind of more creamy, um, almost brioche type note. And that's, that's from that surly aging. The palate is, is really nicely balanced. It is still pretty crisp and clean and light, but, um, but the mid palate um, does have some nice weight to it. It kind of helps balance it out. Um, if you're looking for that really, you know, crisp, clean, refreshing style, I would, I would maybe go for the Sauvignon Blanc. If you're looking for maybe a little more sophisticated style Sauvignon Blanc that you would want to pair with like a nice fish dish, um, definitely consider our uh, Reserve Fumé Blanc. And as I said, we're pouring this as the starter wine. Yeah, it's got a little nutty character, maybe some hazelnut in there um, from, the, from the barrel. Um, consider uh, uh, this Fumé Blanc as a, as a nice pairing for a, for a sophisticated meal. <laughs> And, and we do like starting with a, a nice light white wine in our cellar room as well, so. Cheers, I gotta finish this and then we can move on. I'm gonna try one more time to see if I can add Brian. Nope, not gonna work, sorry Brian. Another uh, technology fail on my part, so. Um, this is kind of the star of the show. This is the uh, next big release, um, the 2018 Petite Syrah, Reserve Petite Syrah. Uh, it says on the uh, label here, Riverside County. And, and when it says Riverside County, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that this is sage uh, fruit. And as I said, that sage vineyard, um, we grow some really nice Petite Syrah on that vineyard. The reason we label it Riverside uh, County as opposed to Temecula Valley is this vineyard actually falls right on the other side of the AVA or the other side of that area that, um, that the Temecula Valley wine country encompasses. So although in, for all intents and purposes, uh, the terroir, the climate is identical to Temecula Valley because it falls right outside of that AVA, we label it Riverside County, but this is uh, uh, mostly from that sage vineyard. Um, and let's give this a try. And if any of you are trying this along with me, feel free to, to comment or ask any questions or, um, or tell me what you're tasting or, or smelling along with us. So one kind of characteristic, very um, telltale characteristic of Petite Syrah is uh, its pigmentation. So this wine has a lot of color, really dark, um, inky, um, almost, uh, blue black color and um, if, if you see this color in a wine you can pretty much guarantee it is Petite Syrah. Um, although it's called Petite there's really nothing Petite about it. It's, it's a full-bodied big uh, big red wine. 
Um, and it actually is a relative of, of uh, Syrah. So it's actually, I think, a cross of um, Pelarsan and, um, and Syrah that was done, I'm going to say in the 1800s. I, I don't quote me on that, but uh, it is a French hybrid um, of two uh, well-known vinifera uh, varieties grown in France. I mean, it made its way, obviously, to California and to the New World, and we've been growing petite sirah in this country for, I, I believe, at least over 100 years. I know it was been popular up in the Napa Valley area for a long, long time, even pre-prohibition. Uh, so let's give this wine a try. It's got some really nice kind of black pepper um, spice to it. And that's that's something that we really we really do pick up in in um, our petite Syrah, especially from the sage vineyard. There is quite a bit of pepper trees around uh, the vineyard, and it is it's interesting um, that that just a little bit of that um, those trees around the vineyard will will kind of impart just that that little subtle hint of black pepper in the wine, which I actually really enjoy. Yeah, it does have a kind of a savory element in there as well. Nice lush mid palate, um, good fruit, kind of more like uh, grilled black plum, um, blackberry, um, nice finish. Decent acidity as well. I mean, it's 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 got really nice balanced acidity, um, and it's it's surprisingly easy drinking without food. I mean, typically, a lot of our um, cellar room or, or uh, select wines um, can be a little austere to drink on their own. But this one, I don't know if it's just because it's you know uh, Friday afternoon and I'm done with work, but it's it's going down the hatch pretty easy. So. <laughs> It does have a little bit of a kind of a leathery note, which is, again is very typical of Petite Syrah. Um, there's certain things that as winemakers, certain tasting notes that Brian and I will use, um, like leather, uh, earthiness, uh, you know, shiitake mushrooms, those, those kind of notes that we'll pick up in the wine that we may not put on our tasting note in the, in the main tasting room or in, in the tasting rooms, because it can kind of turn some people off when they see other than, you know, fruit, tasting notes um, but it honestly is a part of a part of the wine um, and it looks like I might be able to add Brian now so and it's it's kind of you know what we enjoy about the wine that that uh, it makes it a little more interesting okay approve it looks like it's adding him so anyway uh, it, it does have a little hint of that leathery kind of um, rustic note but we really appreciate that in the wine if it gets kind of barnyardy or too over the top animally, um, that's definitely a fault. And that's not something that you want in the line. Oh, there he is. So Wizard uh, there. yeah, if we notice that kind of barnyard character, um, then that's a huge red flag for us. And that means that we've that we've done something wrong in winemaking. So um, it can have an, a little leathery note, which is which is great. Um, it starts getting barnyardy, uh, smells like a uh, like a horse, uh, then uh, then we know we've done something wrong. And that's, that's uh, a spoilage organism called Brettanomyces or Brett short. Um, and you, you do find it uh, in wine occasionally. Fortunately, we've got a pretty good um, sanitation protocol and, and we check on our barrels, uh, check on our wine in our barrels often. So, um, so it, uh, we avoid Brett. I don't know if Brian's still there. He was there for a second and then looks like he went away, but I don't know if he's still there or not. Um, anyway, really nice Petite Syrah. Um, what would I pair with this? I would probably do, because you are getting that kind of spiciness on the palate, I would probably do some like um, coarsely ground black pepper, you know, uh, ribeye or, or New York steak. Something with a nice um, kind of um, marbling to it, um, because it does have decent tannin and decent body. It would hold up really nicely to some nice marbling, and you get that really kind of thick black pepper crust on the steak before you grill it. Um, 
and it kind of imparts that smoky black pepper character on the steak, and that should pair really nicely with this. Um, so anyway, I don't know what happened to Brian. He was here for a second, and then he's gone. So <laughs> it is Friday, though, so who knows? Um, so I don't know if, if any of you have any questions. Let's see if I can. Uh, I don't even know how to do the comments on here, really. Um, wonderful, really savory. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if, if any of you have any comments about this wine or tasting along and have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, there was definitely some things that I was supposed to talk about on here um, that I was counting on Brian to remember, uh, but because he's not, <laughs> he's not uh, joining us, um, we may not talk about them. So anyway, I've got one more wine uh, that we can talk, talk about and try, and that is our 2018 Gold Ryer uh, Vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. So um, we've obviously been doing vineyard designate wines for a while. Um, basically, a vineyard designate wine means that uh, this is Cabernet Sauvignon grown on a very specific vineyard. Um, in this case, it's the Gold Ryer Vineyard in La Cresta. Um, one of quite a few of our uh, vineyard designates that we that we do produce from up in La Cresta. Um, and this vineyard in particular, it's not huge. It's actually a pretty small block. Um, let's see, I might be able to add them again. Okay, so it's a pretty small block of Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, the soil is, is, there you are again. <laughs> Lost your the family life. came home, and you know Zach's always on his phone, so I think they all got on the internet when they got home. Uh, oh, oh, they stole your Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be hearing about that later. <laughs> um, anyway, I was talking about the soil for this Gold Ryer Vineyard, Brian. Um, it, I feel like it is pretty different than than a lot of the other soil types that we see up yeah, in the rest. Yeah, I, I think, think it's the most unique just because of the amount of clay content that's in the soil. Uh, and it's more of really, really rocky soil mixed with clay. And it that whole, it's like a, gets that afternoon sun that just gets an intense heat. So, but. Yeah, it, it is. Um... It does have a lot of clay, and, and when you when you walk this vineyard, you notice this deep red soil. Um, so there's, and he's gone. Uh, heavy iron uh, content in the soil. Um, so uh, it, it you know it's definitely unique. As Brian was saying, it is a western facing slope, and that's uh, you know it's it's works out for us well in a lot of years. We can kind of mitigate that hot afternoon heat. So. With a western facing slope, you're seeing that really warm afternoon sun uh, hitting the vineyard pretty directly. And if we have some years, um, like we do down here sometimes, where you get those, um, you know, late August, early September, uh, crazy heat waves, it can really um, uh, damage the fruit a little bit. So uh, that's why we don't see the Goldwire Cabernet Vineyard every year. Uh, we've taken steps. Um, since then to do some trellising work, uh, some uh, canopy management. So basically the canopy is the, the growth or the, the uh, grapevine bush. And you can uh, trim some of the, the canes off. You can pull some leaves off. You can do some management with that to, to make sure that the fruit, especially on that western facing side, is, is uh, shaded from that hot afternoon sun. So we've, we've learned a lot uh, with this vineyard as we as we've uh, uh, grown up with it. Um, I believe Goldwire was one of our first designates that we did, I think back in 2012 maybe. Um, don't quote me on that, but we've been, uh, we've been making um, Goldwire Cabernet for a while now, and, and we really enjoy it. As I said, not every year uh, we get any or, uh, or enough, or the uh, quality isn't maybe quite there because it did get too hot, but 2018 was a really nice growing season for us. Um, uh, it, didn't, it didn't see a lot of sun. I believe we even had some shade cloth covering the fruit in 2018, which really kind of helps protect it. So um, I know a lot of you were excited to see the Goldwire um, Cabernet Sauvignon back on the menu. So let's give this a try as well. And uh, because it's a small vineyard, it is a small lot. So it kind of comes and goes pretty quickly. I think this one was only maybe six barrels. Um, 
which you know you are crowded lot size is about mm, 60 barrels so this is you know considerably smaller than some of our other lots that we that we produce so this one um it's you know it may be on the list for two months um before it sells out so um and it's already been on the list for a couple weeks now so if you do uh if you do um like the gold rare cabernet if you've had it before definitely um pop in give it another try and and buy it while it's available because as i said it doesn't last very long so with this wine um you definitely it's definitely cabernet sauvignon and um cabernet sauvignon has um a, a component um called pyrazine which uh exhibits or shows itself as kind of this um uh, pepper like roasted pepper kind of aromatic and that's kind of a telltale character of Cabernet Sauvignon and something that I actually really like about the variety. Um, some some great varieties tend to be a little one dimensional and, and Cabernet Sauvignon because it has that kind of uh, bell pepper character in there as well, um, as well as some kind of nice dusty um, earthy character um, with that red fruit. Um, it makes it really complex, really interesting, and, you know, a little more multidimensional as a variety. And, and definitely on my first uh, whiff of this wine, I'm getting that, um, that uh, kind of bell pepper or roasted pepper edge. Some, definitely some red fruit, red raspberry in there as well. And it's funny, w when you walk these vineyards enough, um, you kind of get... Uh, the smell of the of the air and the land around that area and the weeds that grow and the chaparral and when I smell this wine, I definitely smell the vineyard. So, um, you know, you really pick up the the sense of place and, and where this where this vineyard is located. Um, okay. Try one more time to add Brian. There you are. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> if it drops out, I'm sorry. So. All right. Well, I said I was counting on you for the for the, uh, talking, the talking points. points? That we were yeah. Supposed to... <laughs> so hit them with the talking well, points. <laughs> three of these wines are currently the tasting uh, lineup for the cellar room because we change it every month with the release. So we were starting with the Fumé Blanc, which is almost sold out. I think you we only had like 20 days till it was gone or something based off the meeting yesterday. And then we're going to roll into the 2020 Fumi Bank. So, um, and then we also have, we brought back the 2017 Reserve Malbec, and then it goes into the 18 Petite Syrah, which was a release. And then we're almost on the tail end. I think we just brought over the last palette of the 18 Grand Rouge. So, go. Yeah, that one's almost gone. And just like that, Grand Rouge is almost gone. Brian is gone as well, too. So, <laughs> uh, dang internet. He just moved to a new house, and and maybe they quite haven't quite figured out how the internet works over there yet. So, <laughs> anyway, um, this Cabernet Sauvignon is is very full bodied, very age worthy. It it tastes um, tastes like it could use uh, some time to kind of uh, settle down into its own um, because it is so. Uh, full-bodied and tannic, um, definitely age-worthy. So if you have a nice wine cellar or if you have a cool, air, cool dark area um, to store wine in your house, buy a couple, maybe drink one now to, to, uh, to see what you're kind of getting into and then lay one or lay a couple or lay, you know, if, if, you got, uh, if you got room on the card, get a case and lay 11 of them down and, and uh, try one now um, but this one's got some definitely has some distance on it to to age um, and will uh, evolve really nicely I would say at least for the next eight years or so um, so uh, definitely come in give this one a try uh, would pair well with um, those same kind of primal cuts uh, I would say ribeye New York again um, because this wine does have such heavy tan and you're going to want some kind of uh, fat content or marbling in your steak to to um, help balance that out. Um, you could do uh, um, Osso Buco or uh, um, 
braised short ribs would go really well with this. Um, something again that's that's pretty rich and savory and um, and would hold up well to this wine because it is such a big monster of a wine. Um, yeah, really nice fruit still though. And, and I, again, maybe it's because it's Friday, but it's going down pretty nice also. So what will be the next shipment? Um, there you go. The, um, the next uh, mixed shipment uh, for the regular club is our 2019 Domestique uh, GSM blend and 2019 White Label Albarino. Um, the next uh, select shipment, winemaker select shipment, I believe is the 19 uh, Reserve uh, Cabernet Franc that we actually just um, tasted and, and did tasting notes for uh, yesterday and drinking really beautifully. That one is a little more, uh, we call it sophisticated or a little more um, elegant style of a wine. Um, maybe not quite as in your face as this Goldwater Cabernet, but very interesting. It's got a ton of layers um, and it opens up in the glass really nicely. So uh, look forward to that in your next shipment. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy your 2018 reserve. Uh, Petite Syrah, and can you talk about the difference between the Duales we're barrel tasting and what's on the menu? Sure. So um, basically, we started the Duales as a um, Zinfandel Cabernet blend. Because we make a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon from a lot of different vineyards, um, uh, we kind of pride ourselves as a Cabernet house. Um, we try to find any, any and every excuse to blend Cabernet. <laughs> and there's certain uh, certain classic um, Cabernet blends like Bordeaux blends. So uh, Bordeaux blends would be, um, you know, our Latonomy, our Grand Rouge, um, um, wines like that. Um, Super Tuscan style blend would be our reflection. And this is kind of a unique American style uh, blend, uh, which would be uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel. So Zinfandel's got that kind of more um, dried fruit, uh, almost raisin character, um, kind of a potpourri spiciness to it. And then Cabernet, we just talked about uh, big red fruit, big tannin, um, and a little bit of that vegetal component as well. So they blend together really nicely, and, and we came up with uh, Dualis as the name, Dual, basically the, you know, um, the two varieties, and um, uh, ran with that for, for a number of years and, and really enjoyed that blend. And um, as, as many of you know, we produce a really nice Primitivo as well. Um, and Primitivo is the Italian, basically the Italian cousin to Zinfandel. So, um, it's, it's almost like a clone of Zinfandel. So um, you can actually label Primitivo. If you produce Primitivo here in California, you can label it as Zinfandel. Um, but because Primitivo is a specific clone of Zinfandel, you can't label any Zinfandel Primitivo. So it only goes one way. But um, because we uh, pride ourselves on our Primitivo and, and uh, feel like we do a good job growing and, and producing it, um, we keep it and label it Primitivo. And so that's what our reserve Duales um, became. Basically, instead of Zinfandel and Cabernet, we bumped it up. We did Primitivo and Cabernet, and, and we used more of our uh, kind of higher-end La Cresta uh, Cabernet Sauvignon um, vineyards for that blend. So um, actually, Gold Ryer, that same, the same vineyard uh, that we get this Cabernet Sauvignon from, does, uh, does uh, um, Primitivo. So really nice Primitivo vineyard there that we source fruit from, and that is in the uh, Reserve Duales blend that we're barrel tasting right now. That is also selling really quickly. Um, so if you're interested in that, come by, give it a taste, give it a try, see if you like it, and, and get a case or reserve a case while you can, because as I said, it's, it's uh, selling pretty quickly. So anyway, we'll see you again next month when we talk about the uh, Domestique in Albarino. Um, and until then, uh, come by the winery, uh, come say hi, and if you're there on a weekday, uh, uh, say hi to Brian and I, or if not, Tim and, and Sandy and Donna and Dave and, and um, Susan and everybody uh, holds down the weekends 
way better than, than uh, we definitely could. So come by and see us and say hi and taste some of our wine. And until then, we'll see you again. Cheers. Bye.